Hello, Alex here, and today we're going to talk about my first roll of FPP's Super Positive, a very low ISO, black and white, direct positive film, which I shot in the 35mm format in the Hasselblad X-Band 2. Let's get into it. So first things first, some of you who follow my community tab might have seen this poll. This film is what I was talking about here. I made a series of poor decisions in loading, shooting, filtering and developing this film. And I don't have a lot of pictures as a result. So I'm still doing this video because I think I've tracked down the source or the cause of each of these issues so that I can inform you and better inform your own shooting experience so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I did. But anyway, Super Positive is a black and white dactylographic slide film, dactylography being the study of fingerprints, and it was once upon a time used for the high resolution duplication and image capture of fingerprints for various research purposes, whatever they may be. FPP say that the film offers low contrast and an orthochromatic spectral sensitivity, so no sensitivity to red and very little sensitivity to yellow. I don't really agree with either of these entirely, but they're not strictly wrong. It comes down to how you shoot the film, and it's very easy for neither of those things to be true, but I suppose under ideal conditions, those are absolutely the case. The film is only available in the 35mm format and as far as I know only available through the FPP store. It is a direct positive film which means that you get slides rather than negatives through normal black and white development in your normal two-step process, dev, fix. You don't have to go through the complex reversal process like you do with other black and white slide films like Fomapan 100R or Adox Scale of 50, nothing like that. You just you can chuck it in Xtol, Rodinal, D76, whatever. These are the official developers and times. And you'll just get a slide as a direct result of your development. And that's pretty cool. The film has a nominal ISO rating of 0 0.8. Like 0 0.8 less than ISO 1. That is five stops slower than ISO 25, which is absolutely ridiculous. The canisters contain 24 exposures each and they aren't DX coded. So even if your camera had an ISO setting for 0 0.8, which it won't, it wouldn't be able to tell that. But more importantly, if your camera uses DX coding and relies on that, it won't know that there are 24 exposures in the canister. So because this is bulk rolled film, if you're using an automatic advanced camera that isn't very smart about how it detects when you reach the end of the roll, you may suffer problems with actually ripping the film off may not be an issue, but it's worth noting. I shot this roll of film uh, on a bright sunny week. I just cycled around Dublin each day during and after work, and I shot it on the Hasselblad X-Pan 2. I used all of the lenses, and I was pretty much tripod bound the entire time for reasons that should be fairly obvious. To meter, because the X-Pan 2 only goes down to ISO 25, I used the Sekonic L758D. I set it to ISO 3, and then just set my aperture two stops darker than what I was actually shooting at. I mostly shot at f16 apart from a couple of times where I tried shooting handheld, uh, so I set the meter to f32 and that gave me a balanced exposure. Except when I was using a filter, which I'll talk more about in a bit, but because FPP say that it's orthochromatic and has low contrast, I thought I'd use a yellow filter to try and bring out a bit more contrast in some of these images. You've seen a couple of the pictures by now, you know that was a bad idea. As I didn't have any D76, D96 or Xtol at the time that I shot this film, I just kind of reverse engineered a standard-ish condition set for Rodinal and I ended up developing the film in Rodinal at 1 plus 25 for 6.5 minutes at 20 degrees Celsius. And that worked out fine. The images that were exposed well came out perfectly. And it's a slide film so there's really no tolerance so I'm very confident in saying that that's okay. I've even had a couple of my friends copy those dev conditions and they had good results as well. The slides did come out with a slight sepia tint to them, which is not the end of the world. I don't know if that's a, a washing thing. I washed it quite thoroughly and I did rewash it after first seeing that. But, you know, maybe it needs like half an hour of power washing like some films do. I don't know, but it's worth noting that it, the highlights do have that color tint. They're not pure white like the actual leader itself is after I developed that. 
As usual, I scanned the slides with the 1DX Mark III with the 100mm macro lens and then just dealt with them in Lightroom to taste. Having such a low sensitivity to light means that the film is extremely finely grained. I mean, with a loop, 200% magnification on Lightroom, you, it, there's a ton of detail there. The grain is so fine, it's extremely high resolution. And that makes sense for a technical film. Technical films have extraordinarily high resolution regardless of the cost with regards to spectral sensitivity or ISO or whatever, because that doesn't matter for scientific applications because they're not hand holding a camera taking a picture of a bridge, you know. Still, the film is incredibly finely detailed and I can't emphasize just how sharp it is. It is absolutely mind blowing, even in Rodinal. When I shoot this again, I'm gonna be developing it in Xtal now that I have that and I really wanna see just how much detail these slides contain. Obviously the flagship feature of the film is that you can use normal black and white development chemicals to get slides. The black and white reversal process is very involved and has multiple steps including re-exposure and it's very sensitive to pH and temperature or your emulsion can peel off. This, I mean, I just winged it in Rodinal more or less. It was an educated guess, but still a guess. And I just got slides. There's a lot to be said for that, even though it's just one film stock that you can do that with, realistically. Although my longest exposure was eight seconds, which is really not that long for an ISO 0.8 film. That said, it's a technical film, so it's going to have excellent reciprocity characteristics. Low ISO technical films are fantastic in that regard. So if you want to do like 30 seconds or a couple of minutes, I wouldn't worry about reciprocity whatsoever. I would obviously bracket it if it's an important shot, but I would be fairly confident that you don't need that much reciprocity correction for at least several minutes with this film. Though I will test that in the future, at some stage. It basically doesn't have any dynamic range. As Tom likes to say, it's like a newspaper. This and Harman Direct Positive both have the same kind of dynamic range, which is to say, uh, they don't really have any. I know this is a slide film, so it's not going to have a lot of dynamic range anyway, but I would still say it's significantly worse than Velvia in this regard. You have two, maybe three stops of greys, and then it's just pure white and pure black. So FPP might be correct in saying that it can have low contrast, especially if not developed in Rodinal, which gives a bit higher contrast than things like Xtal and D76. But still, if that low contrast is limited to a couple of stops and then just newspaper, black and white, binary, you know, 255 and zero, it's not really fair to say it's a low contrast thing but there are lots of low contrast images out there with it. Maybe they were taken on very overcast days with even longer exposure times. I don't really know. But in my experience, it's not a low contrast film. The film has a wonderfully clear base, like the clearest I've ever seen of any film. So it lends itself really well to projecting the slides because it means your highlights are really clear. However, this makes the film extremely prone to light piping. And of the five strips of film that I have in my binder, the last one, which is the first one because the X-Pan rolls the film backwards, there's nothing there because it's just dead. So be very careful about how you load this film, unlike me. Here's the clip of when I was loading it before I went out and cycled around the city. And that was too much. That was enough to kill the entire last fifth of the roll. I mean, that's four or five exposures worth. So yeah, that's annoying. And that's something you're gonna have to be careful about. It is so sensitive to light piping, in fact, that FPP say that if you store it in a fridge or freezer or on a shelf just for long-term storage, you should put it in a light tight bag because the light that comes on when you open the door of your fridge is enough to expose the film through the leader. That's how sensitive this stuff is. Even though it's very low ISO, that clear base is basically a fiber optic cable. Another thing that I noticed is that the blacks never really go to black. They just kind of go murkier and murkier gray. Don't really get any darker, but just lose detail. Noah of Analog Resurgence did a video on the film and you can see the slides in his video, but at the same time, I can't really tell from that if it's the same kind of thing as mine, but they look somewhat similar. Very qualitatively, I think it's probably the film and not one of my various mistakes that caused that. It's just the way that it looks, which meant it was actually quite hard to scan. The other con that I want to talk about is that it is technically an orthochromatic film. Yes, it has very little, if any, red sensitivity and very low yellow sensitivity. 
but I don't think it's even orthochromatic in the way that most people think, where you've got your blues and greens in a decent ratio. I would go as far as to say that it's more of an extended blue sensitivity film. In a lot of these pictures, I have foliage in there because it was a nice contrast, something moving in the wind over eight seconds exposure time, you know, compared to something that's static. And the foliage, even in the well-exposed shots where the foliage is lit well, it's very, very dark, meaning the film is not that sensitive to a lot of wavelengths of green. There are some shots like this one here where the grass is very bright and the trees aren't. So when I looked at Ilford's recommendation to use a yellow filter with a two stop filter factor with a five stop filter factor on Ilford Ortho 80 plus, I thought I would just do that with this film because FPP say it's low contrast. Great. I can boost up the contrast a little bit. Horrible idea. Even then, that's still a good three, maybe four stops underexposed. You're talking eight to nine stops with a normal number 12 yellow filter. I still think it's fair to say it's not really technically orthochromatic in the way people think of it. It's more of an extended blue sensitivity with a bit of cyan to light green sensitivity. And I know that sounds a bit pedantic, but it is important because it changes how your scene actually comes out. You know, the sky goes pure white because it's so sensitive to blue. Foliage goes a bit darker than you expect. Skin might not look very good. If you can get a situation where you can get a good exposure of a portrait, it might not look that good because blue doesn't really, you know, flatter people's skin that well. I'm going to break my own rules and my own format here. I'm not going to do a proper deep dive because although some of these pictures came out well, they aren't the pictures that I was really looking forward to. The ones I was looking forward to the most are all the ones that I screwed up. And I'm really salty about that. There is one picture that I like quite nicely, which is this one here. I did crop it down from the panorama because um, I left it in panoramic mode by accident. That was not deliberate. So I cost, spent four frames getting that picture rather than two when I bracketed. Great. Another problem from this roll. But it's, it's a nice-ish composition. I think it's the first non-panoramic picture I took on the X-Pan, if you consider the crop to be not shooting panoramic. It's a nice-ish shot with the 30 millimeter. It's simple. I like the lading lines and then the foliage in the background, as dark as it is. Again, super ortho. This was not filtered. And yeah, it's, it's okay. But they're not the pictures that I wanted. So I'm mad and I'm not going to go through a full deep dive. Who is this film really for? I'd say it's for an experimentalist, someone who likes playing around with different things, trying out wacky films, someone like me who cares about as much as what the film can actually offer to the image as the image itself. Someone who cares very granularly about the details of the shooting process and not just the image itself. If that's you, it might be worth a shot. I think it's $11 a roll right now, which is grand, especially if you're in the US, that's cheap. Even importing it to here is not that expensive after customs duties and whatever. It's not bad. It is not an everyday film because of that extreme orthochromatic extended blue sensitivity and the low ISO and the fact that it's a slide film. But it has a place and I think it's really, really cool and I'm really looking forward to shooting it more in the future. But with a bit more care and due diligence, you know, a bit more research about um, how the film works and yeah, I'll try the next haul, see how much detail I can get out of it. I know this roll has been a pretty major disaster, but I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from it if you're planning to shoot this film. And I hope that it will inform your own shooting process and help make things go a little bit more smoothly for you. And you can get some better usable images as a result of seeing what I did wrong. If not, and you don't plan to shoot this film, hopefully you enjoyed laughing at my expense. That's cool. That's going to be it for this video. Stay safe and bye bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at shaka1277 for new pictures every single day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do with the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.